Welcome once again to season two of the All Over Cricket podcast. I'm your host, Jay Dantzaghani, and my guest today is Scottish left-hander, opener in T20 cricket, swashbuckler, power hitter, call him what you want, George Munsey. George, thank you so much for coming on the All Over Cricket podcast. Uh, pleasure. Look forward to it. So, George, you know, you guys have been in Oman for quite a while before taking a trip across the Gulf to the UAE. You were there for the Cricket World Cup League 2 uh, tri-series. You know, just talk us through your preparation for the World Cup as well as Scotland's preparation and how all of that is going. Yeah, look, it's been really good. Um, obviously, we went to a man to play the 50 over stuff. Um, it was the, probably the toughest element to that was getting used to the heat. But, um, you know, for most of us, it only took a few days, which was good. And uh, the guys were all, you know, raring to go and in, in great nick for what was quite a quick transition into 50 over cricket from T20 cricket versus Zimbabwe um, before that trip. So, you know, I, th- I thought we... We kind of nailed it with the Zimbabwe games going into the 50 over stuff, not doing too much, but doing just enough. And uh, the guys really put on uh, good performances out in Oman for the 50 over stuff in, in some testing conditions. Yeah, absolutely. And on the top of uh, on the topic of conditions, I guess this is nothing new for you or the boys. You know, you you have been to the Middle East quite a few times, including two years ago for the qualifier. And, you know, as someone who was covering those games at the ICC Academy, I can tell you it's it's the heat is absolutely unforgiving, especially during day games, you know. So I guess it is something that you guys are used to. But just coming back to Oman, uh, you know, you did face Oman in the Tri-Series as well. So, you know, just talk us through your opposition in uh, in Group B, including PNG. Oman, uh, and of course, the full members, Bangladesh. Yeah, no, look, we've got a tough, we've got a tough group. There's no easy games in associate cricket. There's, uh, there's always so much pressure on these games for us. Um, we're either fighting for uh, money or we're fighting for World Cup places. And, you know, there's no difference in this group. So uh, no game, no game will be taken lightly. Uh, I think we've got Bangladesh up first on Sunday. Um, that's going to be... Um, Obviously, a very tough game, but I, I truly believe we've got uh, the skills to to take down Bangladesh, but all the full members. And you know, I, I'm really backing us to put on quite a show. Yeah, no doubt. And in addition to Bangladesh, of course, you've got Oman and PNG. Um, given that you played them in the 50 over fixtures right before this tournament, you know, just tell us more about some of the Omani and some of the, the Papuan players that, you know, really caught your eye? No, look, they're both very good teams. Um, I think starting with Papua New Guinea, that was our second game, I think. Um, their captain, Asad Vala, uh, actually played club cricket with him um, back in 2015, I think it was, 2014 in Australia. Uh, he's a lovely human, but he's, he's a very good cricketer. Um, so he's extremely dangerous. They've got... Extremely dangerous batting lineup. Um, they love T20 cricket. They love cricket in general, and uh, they're a very dangerous opposition. I think uh, moving on to a man, um, they're now a very settled team. Uh, they've got a lot of experience, and you know they're in their home conditions. So a man's going to be extremely tough to to come up against. But you know, again, we're we're very confident in uh, our team and our skills, and we we truly believe that you know we're we're going to go three from three. Yeah, absolutely. And now that we've covered your opposition, I also really want to talk about George Munsey himself. So, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, perhaps this is just something I'm imagining, but, you know, comparing you to the the player you were in 2018, it seems like you've, I don't know if I'm just imagining this, but it seems like you've bulked up a little bit, uh, you know, you look a little bit stronger is this all in my imagination or you know, have you been putting in all that strength and conditioning work? Yeah, definitely, for sure. I think it's actually something that we've been doing as a as a team is just trying to get fitter and getting stronger. I've definitely enjoyed trying to get stronger. I'm probably not 
any fitter, but uh, certainly I'm stronger. But um, look, it's something I enjoy away from the game is is lifting weights and playing golf. So uh, that keeps keeps my swing in check and it keeps me strong, which is which is good fun. Um, I've got a good network of friends back home that also like to lift weights and enjoy the gym. And uh, lockdown for me was very much gym focused and uh, a lot of fun and very different to what my normal cricketing year would look like so it was uh it was very it was very different lockdown for me i'm actually wondering has has this always been george munsey's identity the power hitter the reverse sweeper the switch hitter were you always like this as a kid um no not not really i was probably a bit more of just a slogger i probably still am just a slogger but um it's growing up i was very much golf focused and cricket was just something that um, allowed me to escape and I just enjoyed and I never really cared too much about getting out or cared too much about um, the outcomes. I very much was in the moment enjoying cricket and I think that's what um, forced the switch in the end and something that I've not quite let go is that the enjoyment is the most important thing and I think that's led to like more experimental things in training, developing certain shots and just experimenting and trying to trying to grow myself as, as a batter. And it's something that's, that's been, you know, quite beneficial for me is just to keep that enjoyment um, at the front of my mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I was watching one of your warm up games against Ireland and just speaking on that strength, I think it was Mark Adair coming over the wicket, digs a short one into the pitch, short and wide, and you muscled it off the back foot. And it, it was a single camera view, but it looked like it went over the, the extra cover boundary for six, you know, and just once again, just going back to that range and trying to upset the rhythm of the bowler and doing, you know, doing new things. I guess it's, at least from my perspective, it seems like, you know, this is not something that people are just born with, right? So can you walk us through just how you were able to develop those skills? Is it a process that took years or is it just something you feel like doing it in a game and you know, just walk us through that. I, I guess it's a combination of things. It's uh, everything comes from a good foundation, whether that's your technical batting foundation or just the way you practice. I think when you're batting out in the middle, you get inklings where the bowl is trying to bowl and you can sort of try and outthink the bowler. But at the end of the day, if you're still in balance and you're watching the ball hard, um, you just just let instincts take over and you're just trying to hit a white ball and as, as simple as that sounds, that's the key really for me is just to keep things simple and just just hit that white ball. I think um, training wise we do we do a lot of emphasis on just uh, freeing the mind and just trying to hit the ball in different areas and not focusing on technical stuff I that feel like that's something that's worked really well for me but um, everyone's different. Um, I also do a lot of technical stuff as well, but it's uh, it's T Twenty cricket. You got to be you got to be flexible. You got to be adaptable, and that's something that um, I enjoy practicing. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit more about the leadership core uh, in Scotland. Uh, you know, what, just tell us what's it like working with Kyle and and working with Shane Berger. I mean, this unit has been together for for quite a long time, and Kyle's been a you know, a long-serving captain of Scotland. What's it like working with Kyle and and and, and Shane and everyone? Yeah, Thomas is brilliant. I think um, Kyle's been around all my obviously all my career, and he's 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 certainly helped me uh, massively. But it's not just Kyle. It's, there's other players in there. You got Barrington. You got McLeod for the batters. You know, we've got a really good group that work well together, not just on the pitch but off the pitch as well, professionally. Um, I, th I think that's that's something that we've always been very naturally good at is, is improving each other at the training grounds. And um, that certainly led from Kyle and, and Shane and we, we always push to help each other. And I, I think that's just the general dynamic of our squad is just, we enjoy each other's company and we enjoy helping each other. And like I said, you've been through a lot as well. And in a way I kind of don't want to take you back to this memory from 2018, but at the qualifiers in 2018 against the West Indies, um, for any viewers who aren't aware, right, there was that contentious LBW followed by the rain, which uh, led to you um, 
you know, not winning that game against West Indies, the West Indies winning by five runs, uh, you know, just, just narrowly edging you out. And of course, there was a Andy Balburnie in the game against Ireland was uh, not given out LBW when it looked relatively plumb, you know. And for a lot of people inside and outside of Scottish cricket, you know, we, we, we felt... We, we felt like, you know, a bit of an injustice had been done. Um, you know, just, just take us back to 2018 and everything that happened there. And, um, you know, the, the exit from that tournament, followed by, of course, you guys uh, qualifying for the Men's T20 World Cup in, in, in November 2019. Yeah, definitely. Look, I, I look at that tournament a little bit differently, I think. Uh, as a group, we were fantastic right from when we touched down in South Africa to start our, our prep, our build-up. We, we had some stiff competition out there. And we, we managed to go over the line in a lot of, a lot of games and that really put us in, in good stead for the tournament. We then went on to um, beat Afghanistan, a full, full Afghanistan team where Barrington and McLeod put on a massive partnership. Um, so there were so many positives for me in that tournament and uh, it was just, I still believe that even even with those decisions, we should have won probably both of those games. And we, the West India game in particular was a bit hard to take, but it was, it was probably down to the weather that sort of stopped the game. But at the same time, we still had that game in our hands and we, we didn't, didn't quite take it. And uh, I look at that trip as a massive positive, but also after not qualifying a massive learning curve and something that the teams definitely got a lot better for and uh, put us in a really good spot as a unit. Absolutely. And I mean, soon after that, that heartbreak, uh, a year later, there was, I guess, you know, the greatest victory in Scottish cricket history, quite possibly the, the win over England, you know, and everything going on with that, people like, okay, you know what, Scotland, they're not getting into a 10 team World Cup. Perhaps we need to reconsider the size of a World Cup. But in any case, you know, just just talk us through the emotions that followed that victory against England. Yeah, obviously that was a special day. That was a day that will live in our memory for a long time. I think it will live in Scottish cricket's memory for a long time. Um, I can't say I didn't see something like that happening. I, th I think there was that much belief in the squad that we were and we always will challenge for members. But at the same time... Um, to beat the world number ones in, in that in that stage was just it was just a special day. It was an awesome feeling, and uh, you know it was it was just a packed out crowd at the Grange on a sunny day in Scotland. That was just it was pretty magical. Yeah, no doubt. Just to go back to what we were discussing yeah. earlier, I guess your range of skills have have taken you to to quite a few places in the world, um, including a county gig at Hampshire last year. Uh, followed by a gig at the Royal London Cup for Kent this year. Um, but I did notice, I believe it was after three games that you were left out of, of the Hampshire lineup. But, you know, in any case, just talk to us about your county experience both last season and uh, this season as well. Yeah, look, I was down at Hampshire last year. Uh, I got I picked up an injury in the warm-ups of the fourth game at Hampshire, which cut my time a little bit short. Um, it was it was very enjoyable. They got a great group down there, and you know, county cricket is a it's a great place to develop skills and to to get some really good competitive matches in. Um, this year was a little bit different at Kent. Again, another great group of guys, and probably just a better build up into these matches led to some better performances on, on my end. But it's just uh, one thing with associate cricket is you don't get the game time that you quite get in other countries or the other national teams get and uh, to have a consistent amount of games through the summer at that level was um, certainly put me in really good stead for the Oman series, uh, the one day stuff and building up to the World Cup. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, with an eye on time, I'm not going to keep you too long, but, you know, coming back to that game time against full member opposition, that is why you know, the Cricket World Cup League Two is so important for you guys because, you know, if you do top it, if you do top League Two and you finish higher than whoever uh, finishes 13th in the Super League, that would mean that, you know, you do get promoted to the Super League and you get a regular fixture list against 
you know, quite a few full members, you know, you'd, you'd play at least what 18 games against full members, if not 21. Right. So talk to us more about, you know, the importance of, of playing full member opposition and, you know, what you guys are talking about in relation to, you know, your, your world cup league two ambitions. Yeah, definitely. I think um, that's why associate cricket is so cutthroat. Everyone's trying to get to uh, that 13th spot to, to sort of, enhance their skills at the at the best level i think that's that's what makes cricketers better um that's how you improve your skills um and that's and that's what everyone's trying to do in that world cricket league too is is to to get that number one spot so to earn the right to fight for a spot in that top 13 um i think it's only going to help whichever country it is and their players to develop and, and get to the next level which which for us is is full member status it's test status it's it's more financial so we can play more cricket at that level. Um, it's just, it's massive for associate cricket. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And so with the World Cup, I know we're jumping around a little bit from here and there, but just to close things out, just talk to us about your goals, both personally at the World Cup, but also the team goals at the World Cup and, you know, what you're looking to do um, in the tournament that's kicking off in what four days from the date of recording just talk to us more about your goals and your ambitions yeah look i, I see it as we've got a job to do in our group our jobs to get to the super 12s and you know if, if we can complete that that job it's then all about just having fun um i think personally all i want to do from these games is go out and enjoy myself and express myself and if i can if i can do that and everything else will take care of itself it's, it's quite simple but um I'm, I'm really looking forward to to getting out there bangladesh on the on the sunday and, and having some fun yep and lastly that game against bangladesh it makes most sense to talk about that now bangladesh going in they would be relishing the type of wickets that you know we have seen in the middle east and i guess it's the elephant in the room right like how are you how are you as a unit planning to tackle bangladesh's uh, spin threat yeah I, I think they're going to be really tough there's there's no question to that they're obviously very suited to these wickets they play in these conditions all the time but look we've got some fantastic players against spin and I'm backing them to to get the job done, to put the runs on the board and to our spinners to take the wickets to win the game. And that's T20 cricket, that's cricket in general. Um, the team that does it the best will win. So as long as we do it best than them on the day, that's that's all that matters. I think you're being a little humble there, man. I think I I know this left hander who plays from for Scotland, he's a pretty decent player of spin. I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> Well, George, you know, thank you so much for joining us on the All Over Cricket Podcast. It's been a pleasure having you. And in, what, four days from now, best of luck in the game against Bangladesh and in the rest of your Group B fixtures. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure.